Hey everyone, welcome to the Acrobatic Arts Podcast. I'm Loren, and I will be interviewing some of the top leaders and innovators from the dance and acrobatic industry. If you are a teacher, performer, student, or a lifelong learner like myself, you are sure to find these episodes intriguing and full of inspiration. Acrobatic Arts is passionate about providing current and relevant information for everyone. So please, sit back and enjoy as we share our passion with you and the world. Maggie Morris is the co-founder of Safe and Dance International, and she is here today to tell us what this wonderful organization is all about. I'm Maggie Morris and I'm the founder and co-partner of Safe in Dance International. I uh, started out as a professional dancer in New York, touring internationally contemporary dance and uh, then became an artistic director of an international touring company and a dance educator. My dance experience um, as a hypermobile dancer, which I know now and didn't know then, was full of injuries as was my company's dance experience and so for that reason I wanted to work with international bodies to look into how we help dancers of any sort, in any genre, uh, at any level optimize their performance and minimize their risk of injury. We all know that dance is not always safe. We like to do dangerous things, risky things, but what we want to do is know that they do it in the most safe and supported way possible. Um, Our work covers uh, 10 core principles of healthy dance practice, which are endorsed internationally and give continuing professional development. These core principles cover what we and the international dance health wellness community feel most support dance teachers and dancers to uh, be stronger, dance longer and dance without as much injury. We also know the pressures and the challenges for dance teachers today and really want to be able to support them in working towards a fitter, healthier and happier teaching life. So these uh, 10 core principles include things like warm up and cool down, nutrition and hydration, psychological well-being of dancers, anatomy and physiology, supplementary physical conditioning, strengthening, stretching and preparation for healthy dance practice. All of them have attached content And uh, for example, the preparation for healthy dance practice, we look at everything a a dance teacher might need to support themselves before they walk into a studio to work with their dancers. This would be uh, optimum floor. What is the correct type of floor for your genre? Do you have it? And if you don't have it, How do you minimize the risk of injury on the floor that you have? We all know that we don't always have the ideal conditions for teaching. I wish we all did in every place that everyone ever teaches, but we don't. We're stuck in gyms or sports halls or little community centers, and we have to manage with what we have and what is available to us. So what we want to support the teachers in doing is knowing how they can ensure that they manage that space. It includes optimum temperatures for dancing, Um, the the floors, what kind of clothing is appropriate. And this would change between genres and between the standard and level and understanding of the dancer that you're working with. It would include things such as policies, if, um, in, especially today, we deal with a lot of litigation, so do you have a touch policy? We need to touch dancers to correct them. But then sometimes, and there have been cases, I know in the States and in the UK, where there's been comeback about that. So 
if there's a touch policy before you even start and all of the parents and the students know, okay, are you okay? This is what we have to do in order for you to study with us and in order for you to progress. We have to come up and correct you and correct how you work. Then you have it, it's sorted, everybody's agreed to it and there's no problem. So those kinds of policies, we deliver content on what they might be. Also insurance, what kind of insurance you might have to have. So those, that's the kind of content that we would have in our core principle around uh, preparing for healthy practice. Then of course we have those other principles, nutrition and hydration. What is the optimum nutrition and hydration for the students that you're working with as a teacher and their age? When do they need protein to recover for injury uh, recovery and also muscle recovery when they've been active? How often do they need to hydrate? All of those things are included in our course. To learn more about what we do, you can go to our website, www.safeindance.com. We do have one short online course. All of our courses offer endorsed continuing professional development. So do be in touch if you're interested in working with us in any way. Definitely go check out the Safe in Dance website. They provide information on healthy dance practice for dancers, dance educators, as well as dance organizations. Thanks for listening, everyone, and have a great day.